A compression ratio is simply a cylinder volume divided by the volume when it is fully compressed in the combustion chamber. It allows to use less fuel more thermally efficient, gaining more power and better fuel economy. Low octane fuels such as kerosene cannot withstand a high pressure and also burn slower, so a lower compression ratio is required. Here are some of the lowest compression ratio engines in the world. Introducing this Blitzen Benz, running 120mm wide tires, on which it was able to hit 228 km per hour in 1909. The record was achieved mostly thanks to this monstrous four-cylinder, which perfectly represents what Mercedes is known for up to this date, a sheer experience of ludicrous amount of torque. The engine was enlarged from 15 liters, widening the bore from 154.9 to 185mm, also increasing compression ratio from 4.8 to 5.8 to 1. There are only two valves per cylinder, and from the side it looks like a pair of separated twins. Ford Flathead V8 was not the first one to be built, but definitely a leading engine in terms of bringing an affordable V8 to the public. Flatheads are doomed to be having low compression ratios, as there is a significant problem with an airflow, and so the very first one started at just 5.5 to 1. However, it was a good motor, as it had a fully pressurized lubrication system compared to a Chevy Blue Flame straight 6 with a splash lubrication on the crank and conrod bearings. Clyde Barrow of the Bonnie and Clyde couple really loved the Ford Flathead, as it could keep high engine pace over 3500 rpm reliably, hence he picked a Ford as a getaway car whenever he could. Tatra T77 was the first streamlined car in an aerodynamic tunnel. It aimed to show that aerodynamics really matter. Because of that, a less powerful engine was plenty enough to compete with a competition, meaning a 60 horsepower 3 liter could reach 145 km power easily. This V8 was mounted typically at the back using a 5.3 to 1 compression ratio, two cooling fans and overhead cams. After 1935, a 3.4-litre engine was used, featuring a 5.6 to 1 compression ratio. Cadillac Series 452 the goal was to create a car of a real impact, so to speak. The company merged two Buick straight eights into a single cast iron narrow 45 degree block for an easy fit inside the chassis. Quite an interesting thing is a crankshaft with counterweights, which was not an easy task to calculate back in 1920s. The engine ran as two separated units, sharing a center mounted camshaft with an overhead valve layout, twin carbs and hydraulic tappets. The car could reach 145 km power, same as the 60 horsepower Tatra, weighing more than 1000 kg less than the Cadillac.
Sokol 1000, also known as the CWS M111, was a Polish heavy motorcycle based on a Harley Davidson with a direct copy of an Indian engine. The pre-production model was quite unreliable, but the mass-produced model was really durable, reliable and just well-built. The circle was entirely produced in Poland, with less than 5% of parts imported, with a sidecar option as standard. Harley-Davidson WLA. It was built on a WL civil model base, using a 45 degree, 45 cubic inch engine making 25 horsepower with 5 to 1 compression ratio. The bike featured a 3 speed hand shifter, 6 volt battery system and a flathead design on the engine. The production ended after the world war, but resumed during the Korean war. Many of these bikes were given away to soldiers to be used on public roads, helping a rise of choppers and other modified bikes. The Lance Bulldog, the only original that was also sold under license, but also widely copied, like a Polish Ursus C45. The engine was a horizontal, water-cooled, hot bulb engine running on oil at a very low RPM. Compared to a diesel engine, this is a low-pressure injection, which runs between 3 to 5 to 1 compression ratio. Hot bulb engines are not efficient enough today, but back at the beginning of the century they were twice as efficient at thermal usage than a 6% efficient steam engine. Built by Harry Ferguson, the Ferguson T20 brought a tractor to an e-rich farmer who could finally replace his draft horses. The engine came from a company called Standard, being a wet liner gasoline engine, either burning gasoline or gasoline paraffin. From the stock there was a 5.77 to 1 compression ratio, but as paraffin burns slower, a kerosene version of this engine had a lower 4.5 to 1 compression ratio, dubbed the TD20 version. Ford Model T is as simple as it can get. Its engine, it was a reverse flow flathead engine design without any pumps. No water pump, no fuel pump, no oil pump. The cooling works on a thermosiphon method. Fuel is fed thanks to a gravity to the carburetor and the engine uses a splash lubrication system, which is fine in such an engine working in low load, but a huge issue when driven harder. The engine was also sharing the crankcase with a transmission using the same lubrication oil.
I think this was quite an interesting topic. What do you think? If you did like it, just as I did, please consider subscribing to this channel. I make plenty of such content. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.